So this video is for OCR GCSE Business Studies and it's looking at a very particular question on paper one and two and that's the analysis question. It tends to be a three marker and uh, what we're going to be looking at is how to structure this type of three mark question. Now to begin with I would see it as a checklist and it's a checklist of assessment objectives that you're trying to achieve to guarantee and maximize those three marks. I believe one of the most important assessment objectives on this particular question is AO1B. Now AO1B looks at your knowledge and understanding and without your AO1B you cannot achieve AO2, you cannot achieve AO3A. So if you've achieved or if you've shown that knowledge and understanding then what you can do is look to how to achieve AO2 which is application and AO3A which is that analysis. But without that knowledge and understanding you will not be able to achieve AO2 or AO3A. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some examples. And some of these examples you may have done as mock exams, maybe you've done it in just class, or maybe you've just been on the OCR website and found them. But the first one we're going to look at is John Lewis. Now feel free to pause the video and just have a read of the case study. But the question is asking about JLP's electrical department and the staff have good product knowledge and what it's asking you to do is analyse one positive impact of this on the quality of their customer service. So obviously the command term is analyse so you, there will be an expectation of a, a logical chain of development. It's only asking for one and this is key because I've had students who uh, have brought in more than one point and it's pointless because actually you're not going to get any more marks for it. And what tends to happen is if you have more than one, it limits the analysis on the initial one that will actually get you the marks. So it's one and it's a positive impact. So you shouldn't be looking at any drawbacks, any issues. It's just the positive impact. So again, what I have to do is I have to show the examiner that I, I understand the concept of customer service and how, product good, uh, how good product knowledge can guarantee that customer service. I need to talk about John Lewis and partners so I have to look at the case study and get the evidence from the case study and then I have to again build up that argument as to why it'd be advantageous. So the first thing I'm going to do is once I've read the question I'm going to go back to the case study and the case studies tend to be quite short anyway so you could do that after every question when it's this type of question and what you can do is you can just pick out some key information. So what I've done here is it's a department store which stocks a wide range of products so I think that might be key. Um, they sell high quality products so you can imagine the customers that go there obviously are looking for those high quality products. Uh, they use face to face selling so obviously that personal interaction um, with customer service is going to be crucial. Now the question is about the, electri uh, the electrical department so we should have an idea of the types of products that they sell and that includes computers and televisions. So my first sentence, I want to show that I, I can achieve AO1B straight away and how I what I tell my students to do is make sure that you start off with a definition. Just give that knowledge and understanding. It's just a safety sentence just to show the examiner that you understand what the concept is. So customer service refers to the provision of a service to customers before, during and after the transaction. By having good product knowledge, the employee should be able to offer all three. But I need to then analyse, well, why is that the case and why does that guarantee that good customer service? So the reason for this is that by having good knowledge on electrical goods such as televisions, so I'm starting to use some of the, um, the examples in the case study, they can answer queries from customers providing them with the information they require when making such a purchase. This should provide confidence to the customer increasing the chance of sales and customer loyalty when shopping for other goods they sell. That's also application because it's a department store and it says they sell a wide range of products. So let's have a look at another example. Now this is Ford Motor Company but the question is quite similar but it's from a different angle. So it's one disadvantage and it's to a different company and a different situation that's been presented. So again I'm only looking at one and I'm trying to get those AO3 marks um, for AO3A with analysis and analysing a disadvantage. My AO2 has to be about Ford Motors and my AO1B I'm making sure that the examiner knows that I understand what manufacturing is and selling such large ranges of products. So to begin with, I've looked at the case study again and I've picked out some key information that I think I could use. So I've thought about the, the actual range of products that they sell. 
and the car designs. And what I've done is I've created, and this is from the Mark scheme, so again, just gives you a bit of um, an idea of what they are expecting. But what I've done is I've, again, started off with a definition. So manufacturing is the process of operations of producing a good. One disadvantage of Ford Motors of manufacturing and selling such a large range is that it's stretching Ford's focus across multiple products rather than just specialising in one. So that's my a one being. I've shown my knowledge and my understanding. So now I have to evidence it. Why is that the case? So if, for example, Ford simply focused on the family cars, then they might be able to become the market leader in such a car as they can prioritise their resources in improving the quality of the car and meet the needs of families. So that's my AO2, and I've thought about a specific car and a specific model that they offer. But by developing so many products, it stretches these resources to cover so many car types, which might prevent such recognition. So that's my AO3A. Another example, I'm going to look at Boohoo this time. And again, it might be another case study that you've seen, but feel free to pause and read it. And the question, analyze one disadvantage to a customer of Boohoo's distribution channel. So distribution is part of the marketing mix and place. So again, I'd have to show the examiner that I understand that. I'm looking at one disadvantage and I'm trying to get that analysis in that AO3A. I have to think about the customer of Boohoo with AO2. And again, as I've just mentioned, the most important AO1B, because without AO1B, I'm not going to get AO2 and I'm not going to get AO3A. So again, you can study the case study, you can bring in evidence, you can start to develop a chain of analysis. But if you do not show that knowledge and understanding of distribution channels, then you're not going to get any marks. So again, I've picked out some key information. They sell in over 100 countries. Uh, they charge for delivery. They uh, clearly sell direct, so via e-commerce. And I've thought, and I've again started with a sentence to define distribution channels is the chain of businesses through which a good is sold. Boo who do not have a physical retail shop as part of their distribution channel and therefore they sell directly via charge delivery. So that shows my AO1B. So one dis disadvantage of this is that customers are unable to try the products before purchasing them. This is even more problematic with clothing as they may not fit. So again, that's my AO2 because I'm thinking about the, st the, the industry that they're in, the products that they sell and why this is even more problematic. This might be inconvenient and expensive for customers due to them having to pay to return the good, causing a delay in getting the refund. And that's my analysis.